I'll be very honest with you. Whenever I hear the words fast or fasting, I get an instant headache and I go into a temporary state of depression thinking about how I will endure that deep, gnawing feeling of hunger because honestly, I really hate feeling hungry. Then I think of all my favorite foods that I will have to take a break from eating. However, once my initial fasting anxiety cools down, I begin to seriously plan when, how long, and how I will fast, as I recall all of the wonderful benefits I usually reap after each fast. So if you feel like I do have any reservations about fasting, don't know how to fast, or find it difficult to fast, stay with me as we explore three benefits and methods of fasting in this eighth episode of the Seven Heaven Catholic Talk series. But before we delve into the benefits and methods of fasting, let's take a quick look at some fasting essentials in the church's code of canon law. Who should fast? According to canons 97 and 1252, all persons from the age of majority, which is 18 years, until the beginning of age 60 should fast. Teenagers from ages 14 to 17 are not obliged to fast, but they are obliged to practice abstinence by not eating meat, including soups and gravies made from meat, on the church's prescribed days of fasting and abstinence. When should we fast? According to Canons 1250 and 1251, we are obliged to fast on the church's prescribed days of fasting and abstinence, which are every Friday of the whole year, every Friday during Lent, and on Ash Wednesday and Good Friday. How does one fast? According to Canon 1249, Fasting should involve a combination of prayer, performing works of piety and charity, denying ourselves by fulfilling our own obligations more faithfully, and especially by observing fast and abstinence. Now let's talk about the three benefits of fasting, which are in perfect alignment with the three dimensions of ourselves physical, spiritual, and mental emotional. When we fast, we realize physical, spiritual, mental, and emotional benefits that contribute significantly towards our overall health and well-being. Some of the key physical benefits of fasting include a body cleansed of toxins better than usual. How? During fasting, the body gets a chance to remove more toxins from our body because it gets a rest from having to digest food completely, which usually takes between 24 to 72 hours, depending on the types of food eaten, and it refocuses some of that time towards toxin removal. Cells are repaired, rejuvenated, and strengthened. This is a second huge benefit from which all other benefits flow. Why? Because cells are the building blocks of all living things. They provide structure for the body, take in nutrients from food, convert those nutrients into energy, and carry out specialized functions such as breathing, digesting food, allowing passive and active transmission and secretion of substances, facilitating growth, and aiding in reproduction. So then once your body is cleansed of toxins and your cells have been repaired and strengthened, your body will begin to operate as a newly reconditioned machine. And the evidence of this will be more efficient burning of energy by the body, normalized heart rate and blood pressure, balanced blood sugar levels, better sleep patterns, digestion and secretion, 
improved senses, that is vision, hearing, taste, touch, and for longer fasts, loss of excess body weight as well because the body then begins to burn stored fat. In his encyclical on repentance, Panitemi Pope Paul VI outlined seven spiritual benefits of fasting, which are as follows. When we fast, we free ourselves from intemperance, example, excessive indulgences in alcoholic beverages, appetite, passion, actions, speech, etc. We chastise or discipline our souls as the Lord instructed the Israelites through Moses to do in observance of the Day of Atonement in Leviticus chapter 16. We humble ourselves before God, turn towards God, dispose ourselves to earnest prayer as Daniel did while praying for and confessing the sins of the Israelites exiled in Babylonia in Daniel chapter 9 and 10. We understand divine things more intimately as Daniel did in Daniel chapter 10 through God's inspiration and the help of an angel in his vision by the Tigris River. We prepare ourselves for encounter with God, just as Moses did when he received the second set of stone tablets from God on Mount Sinai in Exodus chapter 34. Some of the key mental and emotional benefits of fasting include improved brain structure and functioning as well as enhanced cognitive or mental function and boosted cognitive performance due to an increase in the generation of nerve cells also known as neurons and improved connectivity of and communication among neurons in your brain then all of these regenerated and better community, communicating nerve cells lead to a revitalized nervous system that improves mental clarity and accuracy, helps prevent neurodegenerative disorders such as dementia, Alzheimer's, Huntington's and Parkinson's disease, helps prevent mental problems such as anxiety, disorders, depression, and psychosis, increases feelings of calmness, increases one's happiness quotient. In the Journal of Fasting and Health, happiness is defined as the presence of positive emotions, life satisfaction, and absence of negative emotions such as depression and anxiety. There are three principal ways in which we can undergo a fast. We can do a partial fast, an intermittent fast, or a complete fast. However, the main ingredient in all three methods of fasting is prayer. In other words, if you undertake any of these three methods of fasting and you fail to incorporate times of serious prayer, you are just dieting. The Catholic Church also adds a third dimension, charity or almsgiving, to the traditional triad of prayer, fasting, charity. If we are to comply with the divine precepts of penitence as Catholics. So now let's take a closer look at each of the three methods of fasting. Although the obligatory age range for fasting in the Catholic Church is from age 18 to 59, anyone can fast. Yes, you heard me right. Anyone can fast using a partial fast. 
no matter your age, gender, financial status, health status, or physical condition. I'll show you how. Well, we all have that one thing we can't go a week, much less a few days without having. I call them must-haves, which includes things such as sweet treats, example, chocolate, ice cream, cake, savory treats, example, pastry, spicy foods, pizza, favorite sports, example, football, baseball, basketball, tennis, favorite pastimes, example, dancing, hiking, singing, special places, example, beach, bar, club, obligations. These are those humdrum, boring tasks that each of us has to perform in our individual lives, which we must do and are probably sick and tired of doing. We wish they would just go away. Well, we can fast by doing them without complaining or wishing them away. Intermittent, intermittent fasting simply involves dividing the 24 hours of the day into two periods, a fasting period and an eating period. For your fasting to be considered intermittent fasting, the fasting portion of your day must be equal to or more than 12 hours. A good example of this is the 6 to 6 fast, that is fasting from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Besides intermittent fasting, or I should say besides 12 to 12 intermittent fasting, that is 12 hours of fasting and 12 hours of eating, another popular time variation for intermittent fasting is 16 to 18 intermittent fasting, which involves fasting for 16 hours and eating during the remaining eight hours. While doing intermittent fasting, there are two important things that you should avoid doing. Firstly, avoid overeating during your eating period in order to retain the benefits of your fast. Secondly, avoid eating after 8 p.m. since food takes a longer time to digest at night and you want your food to be properly digested before you go to sleep. Complete fasting. A complete fast involves not taking food or drink of any kind. This most severe form of fasting can range from a one day fast to any period of time that you wish or feel comfortable doing without risking your health. One day fast, that is 24 hours, like that of the Israelites at Mizpah who turned away from idol worship and sought God's help to rescue them from the power of the Philistines in 1 Samuel chapter 7. Three-day fast, like that of Queen Esther and the Jews in Susa, when they faced imminent destruction of all Jews by King Xerxes of Persia in Esther chapter 4. Seven-day fast, like that of the people of Jabesh, Jabesh in Gilead, who fasted after burying King Saul and his three sons, who were killed in battle against the Philistines on Mount Gilboa in 1 Samuel chapter 31. 21 day fast like that of Daniel who fasted for his sins and that of his people while exiled in the kingdom of Babylonia in Daniel chapter 10. 40 day fast like that of Jesus before he began his public ministry in Luke chapter four or Moses before he received the 10 commandments from God on Mount Sinai in Deuteronomy chapter 9 or any time period without risk to health. Fasting as done by the Jews and Jesus is normally a dry fast that is not even water is taken during the days of fasting. However, if you are new to fasting beyond a three-day fast it is medically advisable to continue drinking water only during your period of fasting in order to remain hydrated, keep your blood pressure normal 
and avoid serious health complications. At the start of this video, we answered the questions of who, when, and how to fast. Let's answer the final question, why we need to fast, by looking at what the Catechism of the Catholic Church says. Firstly, according to paragraph 1438, the seasons and days of penance in the course of the liturgical year, Lent and each Friday in memory of the death of the Lord, are intense moments of the church's penitential practice. These times are particularly appropriate for spiritual exercises, penitential liturgies, pilgrimages as signs of penance, voluntary self-denial such as fasting and almsgiving, and fraternal sharing, charitable and missionary works. Secondly and thirdly, according to paragraphs 2043, we fast in order to prepare us for the liturgical feast, and these will include Easter and Christmas, the church's greatest solemnities, and to help us acquire mastery over our instincts and freedom of heart. Fourthly, according to paragraph 540, by the solemn 40 days of Lent, the church unites herself each year to the mystery of Jesus in the desert. Before I leave you this week, I want to say a really special thank you to each and every one of my subscribers. I appreciate you very much. I also want to hear from each of you. So before you leave, make sure to leave a comment below this video and tell me what feast you'll prepare for with fasting, Christmas, Easter, or perhaps a personal intention. What type of fast you'll do, a partial, intermittent, or complete fast, a, a particular Catholic topic you'd like me to do, or anything you'd like to say. Thanks for watching. See you in my next video.